so many old friends. You know, I mean, you know, Pete, I'll tell you, I uh, actually, um, COVID touched all life. So I'm more determined we must have more parties. <laughs> I tell you what, because I even decided to scrap my house and build that party house. That specially designed for parties. And at year end, I had a party. I was really happy because in Singapore, and I invited maybe 15 nationality to it, I don't know. The people from ambassador to United Nations and nonprofits, to family office to philanthropy, to impact investment, so many different people, banks, to celebrate life. And more important, to celebrate Singapore. Because Singapore is now a melting point. Singapore does not only belong to Singapore, Singapore belongs to all who wants to make Singapore the smallest, not big place for greatness. The melting point and the crossroads between these and places. And it becomes so evident to me that I feel lucky. I'm part of this since 1960 when I first met Singapore. So, more parties, more parties, because party put us together. Party make us connect. Parties make us silly, so our ego is a little low. And party build trust because we start understanding people's character, how they did drive. And the true intent. So, you know, if you think about what we do all the time, we're just not aware. We are constantly doing one thing from the I to the we. The I in the journey that the COVID pushed us to face ourselves, the we, our family, that we have to face, even we don't want to talk to them about certain topic that comes out during COVID. Our families is a journey to I to we. Our company is a journey to I to we. Our society. All we do every day is to create an I to we journey to create humanity. We just don't realize it. And now of course during COVID we realize that everything is like the environment is like everything. And we are Part of this, like that's what we're doing to the I to the we, except we're not realizing that's what we're doing. So, young me, my friend, prepare to party a lot because I have come <laughs> and again, I'm really happy to see all my old friends here. They all came great. I'm really happy. The Family Business Network has became a chance to see each other face to face and really connect because that's the most important. I mean, we all know Zoom and Teams and all that is great, but nothing beats over cocktail, which who's, who's sponsoring? Uh, okay, I don't put it to my party committee, okay? And thanks for sponsoring the booze. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I even bought some whiskey from him and I drank it to cold it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Back to the real topic. I've got a new job. Yes. I've been approached to uh, head up the ambassador circle. And I said, and they would say, can you make it more effective? I said, we're going to make some changes. And they called it. That was Act C, three and a half years ago. But during COVID, we had to run a, comfort, a little online thing. And of course, as I said, COVID changed. There's a sense of urgency to life and preciousness to the whole system. In the meantime, during that period, had been a step up in many things they have done during the COVID, including tightening up the relationship with the United Nations and championing the sustainability. 
frankly, we have no choice because regulation is coming. As my good friend Alfonso says, you have no license to operate soon. So either you move on and promote it, or you be removed. This is the new world, this is the new era. And the new era is here. I've just been in Davos, I've just been in Bontag, but I can sense it. Europe is going to lead the way, but Asia, where economics are shifted, is where it needed most to not to make mistakes in order to make. We need to bring this in as we rapidly develop our society, our economics, and our people. And so, uh, my new job is to say to the ambassador, you are not retired from all the leadership position. You have now graduated to be an official. So we're going to do one thing, and that one thing is to help FBN as a network collective intelligence and power to move on to distinguishing change for humanity. Because if we don't do it, we will be removed. And I have thought deeply about the topic. One of the things I changed during the COVID is I become an author, a writer. I'm writing five books at a time, a true industrialist, making efficiency in the production line. A new book is coming out soon, next month, I hope, but I will change the publisher of the next book because they're too slow. My first book is really slow because it's published by Stanford. Very slow. My last book is now by trade, still slow. I think I'm going to change to Singapore to publish so I can read out the neck every day. So now the book I'm going to publish is called One Choice, One World uh, The Rise of Well Being and Happiness Economy. The book I published during COVID is called The Dawn of the, of the Year of Well Being. And the next book I'm writing is called Impact Investment, A Theory of Holistic Action. So, well, these are the English books, but I'm also writing three, four Chinese books. Anyway, then about what I changed. Let's talk about change. There's an opportunity to break the myth of family business over, not over three generations. I think you would agree, if we unite the family business based on greed, which is a social contract that we see in business, the shareholders say, maximize profit as quickly as possible in management, you got to share this process. That's why you have still to pay hundreds of millions of dollars, which is nonsense, right? But what does it bring? It brings a market economy that is a moral, a market economy that creates sustainability challenge, but fear not. It is, like he says, sports can change us to take challenge. Sustainability can evolve humanity into a new level of civilization. We would only evolve in the direction of the challenge. And this enormous challenge is shifting us into a new era we've never, never seen before. Why? Because we have achieved the capability of all material needs. It's a distribution problem. Divide a hundred trillion over eight billion people, you know we are there. Now we are in the stage of satisfying our ultimate human needs, self-actualization. So it's time that we're not going to ambition going bigger, but it's time to find well-being happiness, to actualize ourselves, 
to see the greatness of who we truly are and find our calling. This is an awakening period for the arrival of life of purpose and calling, except we transition. And family business are very different. We want the family to flourish. A grief-driven family business cannot flourish and sustain. It will fall apart as we see the world and will bring side effects to our family. Disharmony, fight. We will not be able to do the I to be effective if grief is there. If you think why we cannot over sweet generation, it's because we have a different definition of legacy. There's a role of business in society, and this family is champion. And business is to serve society, meeting human needs, and being rewarded for our service and effort. It's not about capital, speculation, or marketing. It's about truly servicing so we can sustain. Legacy is not holding on to the business that our parents gave us or the grandparents because they're stupid. Business change, it involves either change. That's not a legacy. Legacy is holding to the spirit of the family business to do good business. And that has to evolve too. In every era, it evolves. So we have to redefine ourselves about what is legacy. We have to really think about prudence. That is passing on fear. When I was young, every time I want to do something, I see my grandfather says, prudence, prudent. But now I understand it is fear. Because he thinks that we didn't have hardship, because he thinks we don't have experience, because he's fearful his next generation grow up with a, with a silver spoon, are not experienced, and they will do stupid things. So take the word prudence with a new definition. Be mindful, be purposeful, and how we choose. Because in fear we only see risk. But in love is all the opportunity to see. And this is so evident now. Do not be neutralized by fear. Let our love for humanity and life prosper by taking on this challenge that we have. By taking on the challenge of business reform because business needs to reform. Do you think the corporations with no human face or human sentiment or intent or human love and a contract of making maximized profit can change? No. We are now having a new role, whether we like it or not. Business has changed. Business needs to reform. The market economy must put morality in. And we are 70% of the economy, two-thirds of the companies, and 60% of the one, we have no choice, but this is a great awakening. But now it's going to wake your family business to learn about what is true sustainability. It's a whole system, right? We cannot sustain in a bigger system. But if we serve the whole system of life, the environment, the society, the I to we take it to a new level, and we will become a family business. Sustain. Driven by love and purpose, a bigger purpose. If we are only serving ourselves, we will fight. But we serve a bigger thing. What we fight for is so mundane. We must bring ourselves to a true level in this era because we have no choice, no license to operate. We must act now. It's now. On them. So I have a new role, but the good news is lots of parties. Yes. And then I'm going to put the poison of revolution into the trends because I'll be providing the news. 
family business has three legs. Okay? Family office has served family. The lantern is to serve humanity. And business has served society. We are already there. We have management capability, all three. We just need the eye to read the family and the family business for higher purpose and integrated to make this work. Let me ask you, minister talk about the challenge to professional at level. So, what is something AI cannot be done by humans? What? AI will be smarter than us. They can create even better poetry for our girlfriends or wives and lovers. What can we do better? Still the same job. AI cannot be made the eye to the weak. And what is eye to the weak is management. From managing yourself, your family, all the way to managing life. So there's something also changed in me besides writing books. I started a management stewardship center for my company and soon to be offered to the network. Management of life, the process of I to me is something AI can never replace. AI is created by human to do production work. So what will we do when we don't have to do production? Man, we party, we focus on creating to the eye, to the we. In that great picture. In the meantime, we are transforming ourselves, our family, and the world. And we have a mission. I have, after the conference, uh, three weeks online with my some ambassador they asked me, at least one of them, Fred, what do you want? What do you mean? I said, I want your time. And I want your money. So I know you have. But most important, I want your soul. So we can be so made on the journey. Keep hiding. I'll hide Thank you.